Welcome back. So in this video, I would like to go through how you can make some odd curves. Um, in particular for this, this example and project, I'm going to look at this kind of curvy outline shape on this teacup. And uh, for this project, we're going to be using FreeCAD as the modeling tool. So come over here to FreeCAD and I'll make myself a new part here. And I'm going to do all of the sketching in uh, part design, but I'm going to use the curved shapes workbench to do the heavy lifting for this. And this is a, a pretty nice workbench. It's not included in FreeCAD by default. You've got to come over here to your add-ins manager and uh, come down here and install it. So let's get started with this. I'll come over here to part design. And uh, the goal is just to um, make a shape that looks like the outside of the teacup. So I'm not worried about the, the actual teacup shape at this point. So I figured we'd uh, go through a brief description on how the curved shapes workbench um, actually functions. So I'll come down here and I'll get myself like a kind of a weird shape. Right. So this is this is a uh, an interesting shape here. And I'm going to close it off and then later we'll come back to the teacup. All righty. And then I'm going to make a second sketch. And what the curved shapes workbench does is if I make two sketches and let's say they look like this, it's going to take this original sketch and kind of smoosh it in between here. Um, you might not, not get what I'm saying with my, my terrible drawings, but it's going to take this sketch and it's going to stretch it out and then it's going to loft through the various sketches and you end up with a quite nice looking um, end thing. So I'm going to bring in this point here. And for this, I'm, I'm not terribly worried about the sketches actually being constrained. So I'm, I'm going to ignore that for now. So we'll do kind of a, a funky shape on this side. Uh, and that's a bit, uh, make these two things tangent and we'll make this end up vertical. We'll put that up here and we'll make this bottom one horizontal. I don't think you actually need to do this, but just so that it, uh, it looks kind of nice. Alrighty. And then I'm going to do one more sketch to control the left side of this. And for this one, I'm just going to do kind of a, a straight line and I'll bring in the top point there and we'll make these two things horizontal. Alrighty. So at this point for this uh, example here in the beginning, we're good to switch over to the curved workbenches and I'm going to select the original sketch in our two uh, like construction sketches. And you can see here what it's doing is uh, putting a couple of things, I guess this original sketch gets stretched and distorted um, to fit inside of this, uh, our curves. And we do have a few options here if we come down to the curved array is we can make this a solid and you can see that it, it fills it into a solid. And we can also turn that off and we can make this a surface. So you can see there that this is now just the outside of it. So turn that back off and we'll uh, turn solids back on. And then we have this uh, items number here. And this is how many cross sections it's going to generate when it, when it lofts through these. So if we, if we change this to 10, you'll see that it, uh, it is closer to the original shape. This is a little bit funky here. P 
appears to be some boundary condition issue. But we'll see maybe if we change it to 40, that disappears. Yep, and there you can see, I mean, this is pretty, pretty close to our original profile. Um, I mean, just about as close as you can get. So with that out of the way, I will, uh, I will continue on to the teacup. So I will hide both of these. And I'm actually going to group these together in a folder. Let's see. I believe there is a, a folder button here. I might just make myself look stupid. Um, but nope, here's a folder. We'll group those together and I will rename the folder to be example. And I'm gonna grab a second folder and in part design here, going to get a new part. And for this, we're gonna do something very, very similar. So I'm going to bring back my origin and I'm gonna start a sketch on this bottom section here. And for this, my goal is to model um, one single section of like the curvy bit of the teacup and then, and then not worry about the rest of it. And we will just uh, kind of pattern the rest of the teacup around. So we'll we'll see if that works out. I'm not uh, not super confident on on how that's going to work, but seems like it's possible. So for these, I am going to dimension them. We'll make both of these equal, and then this is approximately the radius of our teacup. So I will give these a radius of about. Oops. Oops. I will give them a length of approximately one inch. So that will make this a two inch long teacup. And for the uh, for the curvy bits, I'm going to grab three arcs here. Um, I guess the trick with this, I believe, is that uh, this section here and this section here have to line up. And then also this section here has to end up perpendicular to that line there so that when it gets patterned on the other side, it's actually a uh, straight pattern. So we'll make those two perpendicular and perpendicular. And we'll make these two tangent. And then we will grab this and that, make them horizontal. And I will put this on the center line. So now we should be just about there. And I'm going to, oops, I should probably make these two here equal. Alrighty. And then we'll just adjust this until we get approximately the right shape. That looks pretty good. Um, so I'm going to come in with the angle tool and we'll see if that's approximate, this angle here is approximately um, something that's, you know, divisible evenly by 360. The 360 is evenly divisible by it. So it is approximately 40. So if we get our math out here, we need 360 divided by about nine. I'm estimating that uh, it should be approximately right. Oh, yep, 40, hit that one spot on. And then uh, this last bit here, uh, we'll, we'll just grab that right there. Um, that looks about right. And let's see what else we need. So this is kind of how curvy it is. And I, I would like this to be moderately curvy. Um, so I think this one here is, is okay also. So now that we've got that locked down, we need to go in and make our uh, helping curves, our rails, I believe they're called in, in other programs. 
So the first rail I'm going to make here is just, uh, I guess, a, a straight line going upwards. And we'll make this teacup like two inches tall. So we'll do two inches. Okay, maybe that's a, a little bit tall for the teacup. How about 1.5 inches? Okay, that seems that seems more reasonable. And I'm I'm just now thinking about this. I was thinking about my length in this dimension here being one inch or so, um, but I really wanted that to be at the top of the teacup. So we might come down here and uh, change this one to be slightly shorter. Maybe let's say 0.5 inches. Oops. So it does not like the rest of these dimensions. Um, it's not able to solve with them in there. So I'll uh, quickly get rid of those and then we can adjust this length to 0.5 inches. Oops, 0.5 inches and not 0.5 millimeters. And it looks like it's all, uh, it's all messed up now. So we'll see if the, the back button helps and the back button does help. Alrighty, so there now it's shrunken down. We'll just uh, adjust these once again. That looks approximately right. And this one here also looks right. Alrighty, and then for our second guide curve, I'm going to grab another sketch on this face. And let's see if I can bring in this line here. Um, yep, and it does give me the intersection point there, which is exactly what I was looking for. And for this line, I'm going to do the two sketches or two, uh, two arcs once again. And there will be two tangent arcs. Oops. Two tangent arcs, um, just so that I can have a little bit of control over them and that uh, we can make them tangent at the bottom and tangent at the top or perpendicular. Oops. Horizontal there. And this one and that one horizontal. And then I'm going to grab the length here for the overall height and we'll make this horizontal with that so that we're being consistent. Alrighty, and then I'm just gonna maneuver these so that it looks like approximately the right shape. You know, obviously a teacup is kind of more sloped on the bottom and then kind of comes out at the top because it's got that little foot section on the bottom. Although I believe that, that if this was an actual teacup, this pattern wouldn't be on the bottom. So maybe you'd, you know, only do this from here up. And then uh, this little bottom section here, you know, you'd use some other type of feature, but we won't do that today. So now I'm going to give this a horizontal distance of approximately 1.5 inches, making this a three inch teacup, which is pretty large. I believe I, I don't I don't normally use a teacup, but it sounds pretty big to me. And then for the last thing, I will just uh, pin that since uh, that looks approximately right. Alrighty, alrighty. And let us see what uh, what curved shapes workbench spits out. I'm a little concerned that this is going to get stretched in in one direction and it's not going to end up kind of, you know, getting equally bigger um, all the way around. And as you can see here, it does kind of end up end up stretched. So we do need two more guide curves. And for these second set of guide curves, I'll probably choose this point here and that point there. Um, 
and we'll just uh, stretch them out so that they look approximately correct. I'm actually thinking about this, and this might be might be somewhat difficult because you can't uh, you can't sketch them on this uh, YZ plane. You'd have to uh, we'll have to make a second plane here and then put the sketch on that. So it's possible we actually don't use this uh, this sketch here, the original kind of curve sketch, and instead we opt for two identical. Um, sketches on this kind of funky plane thing. So this didn't turn out quite what I was looking for. So we'll move on to the plane thing. So switch back over to part design and I need to make a plane to work on. And the plane needs to be perpendicular to this and this. And we'll see, it does not like that. So I will do a plane here, which means that the, the plane is perpendicular to this line. And then I will put the line there. And then, you know, because I, I don't want to work out the geometry here, obviously, we'll just rotate the plane by uh, 90 degrees in, in whatever direction is the correct one. So it's, uh, it's obviously not the x direction. Um, and it's not the y direction. And it does not appear to be the z direction. So uh, obviously, we must be doing something incorrect. So let me try a, another sketch. So it's OK if it's here. Um, let's see if the rotation here works. So it does work. And we're looking for a rotation around the vertical axis. And this looks like it's correct. So I'll plop a 90 in there. And this will be our sketch plane for the, I guess, right side. And then I'll grab a second sketch plane for the left side also. So datum plane on this line. And we need to rotate it once again. 90 degrees. Oops. I did uh, nothing. It looks like it's the y axis we need to be rotating. All right. So now that we have our two sketch planes, we can uh, come over here. And I'm going to hide the second one so that I don't get myself confused. And on this sketch plane, there's a, a few things I want to grab from the base sketch. I want to grab that point and I want the overall height. And I think that should be enough. Um, so I'm going to put my arcs in. And we'll do a similar setup. These two will be tangent. And then this one here will be perpendicular to the, the top, and this one will be perpendicular to the bottom. And of course, they will be the correct height. And then I believe at this point, all we need to do is control the distance that this is from the center. And we can do that just like we did before. So I'll grab this point, and this one, horizontal, 1.5 inches. And I see now here that we're reusing dimensions. So if, if I was doing this for real, um, I would probably put that dimension here into a, a spreadsheet, reference the spreadsheet on, on every occurrence so that nothing is being duplicated. And then I'm also going to grab the point here where this crosses over um, so that I can make these two horizontal. 
and that ensures that this has the exact same profile as the other the other side. Alrighty, and we'll move on to the other side here. Grab a sketch, and then once again, an identical setup. So grab this point down here, grab the height, and then I also need that point, and grab my two lines here. Make them tangent to one another, perpendicular to the top, and of course, perpendicular to the bottom as well. And this and that, oops, let's see if I can grab it now. This and that are horizontal. And then this top bit here, and that top bit there are horizontal. And of course, our repeated dimension, once again, 1.5 inches. All righty. So now that we have our curves here, I shall grab the original sketch and our guide curves, and we'll switch over to the curved shapes, and we'll see if this is functioning. And does appear to be functional. So that is looking good. If we come over here, we can uh, switch this to a solid, if you recall. And it does look like it is uh, grabbing the curves here. It doesn't look like it's quite on uh, on top of it. Um, it is possible that this section here is is causing that issue. I'm not quite sure. We can uh, we'll delete this real fast, and we can try it without that. We'll see if that makes any type of difference. And it looks like it, it doesn't. So it just wants to uh, just wants to be kind of intersecting in that area. Um, and that's, I guess we'll, we'll figure out whether or not that's okay or not. So I'm going to come down here and change this to a solid. And we'll give it, let's say 40 points and you can see that this is kind of shaped i guess um not i guess this this seems quite large it doesn't quite have enough ruffles so i might go back into the original base sketch and see if we can put about twice as many ruffles in here as we had so i'll grab this 40 and we can make this 20 degrees. And then this point here, we'll delete that and uh, bring this over until it looks good again. We might also delete this one, see if we can give this a little bit more protrusion out. And that looks approximately correct. So I will lock those in place again. Okay, and let's see. And of course, uh, FreeCAD being parametric modeler, it uh, it auto recomputes all of this stuff. So you can see our, you know, pizza slice here is now 20 degrees instead of 40, and we didn't have to do anything extra to get it there. So. That looks okay. Um, so now I'm going to come over to my curves here and let's see. It is looking good. Not seeing anything that's, that's super critical that appears to be missing. So now we will move on to uh, getting this particular uh, part um, revolved around. 
and we'll see if we'll see if part design can do this. I don't believe that part design will like this since this is not technically a part design feature. So if that doesn't work, we'll uh, we'll move over to part and we'll see if part can handle it. Um, and if that doesn't work, then I, I guess we'll we'll figure out what we're going to do. So in part design, um, of course, there's no body in this body. 001 in part design, but we can add the solution for this curved array into the body by just dragging it over. Now you can see that that body is in there. And uh, if we come over here to the polar pattern um, and we want to go around the Z axis here, we want to pattern by 360 over 20. Oops, does not like that. So I will calculate it myself, I guess. So 360 over 20 is 18. So that would be 18 occurrences. And I can already tell that this probably isn't going to work given that the model here is not updating. Yeah, so it's it's upset that this is not a part design feature. So we will try to move over to part. And part has a rotational feature, I believe. Let's see if I can find it here. Otherwise, I believe I have a workaround for part design. Um, let's see, and I'm not I'm not seeing it here. So I guess we will uh, we will come over here back to part design. We will try our workaround. So I'm going to make a new empty part, empty body, and I'm going to boolean combine with this uh, this other body and. Uh, We'll see if we can fuse those two together. And it's not particularly liking that. So let me let me do some research here real fast. And uh, we'll see if part has a circular mirror feature. So in my research, I did not see any obvious way to pattern this around. So I figured we'd explore a few more kind of workarounds. And if none of those seem like they're working, then we can uh, go through and just duplicate this part uh, a few times and I guess rotate it a little bit and then, you know, combine them together and then, you know, duplicate that bit a few times and you know, eventually you make your way all the way around. Or alternatively, I guess you could have used a a sketch on the bottom that uh, shows, I guess, exactly what's going on. I, I suppose this might be easier. Um, but let's uh, let's go through uh, part design here just a little bit longer and uh, see if we can get any of these uh, these parts here to work. So activate part design and come over here to your base feature. So as, as we found before, um, only additive and subtractive features can be transformed. Um, so one thing that we could do and this is, is very similar to what we did before, is we could come over to, uh, let's see, part, and uh, make ourselves a cube that just extends over the entire model. And then uh, we will add it this to the, uh, the part 
So even, even though anything's not being added, I believe this will make it a feature. And I will just uh, transform this so that it is over the top of the part. And then I'll move it this way a little bit so that we don't have this kind of funky edge um, that's very thin on the very edge of our, our Boolean because that might cause us issues. So switching back over to part design here, grab these two bits and we'll see if we can Boolean common them. Looks like that works. And obviously now we have the uh, original part back, which is exactly as expected. So now it's possible to maybe mirror this feature. Although it looks like that is that is not going to uh, to be working. So let's see. I believe I'm just going to come back down here to this original sketch and we'll just add in the rest of it. So this should not be too difficult. It's just a little bit of uh, time consuming. So I'm going to take uh, these two bits here and change them to be construction lines. And then uh, we'll add in a few more lines. I count, I believe, 18 sections. So we need 20 lines. And obviously if you if you are privy to a, a better way to do this, um, you know, feel free to uh, tell us in the comments. Alrighty, so here I have the finished sketch. Um, I went all the way around and, you know, put all of these lines in here. So I, I determined that that took quite a bit of time. So maybe um, if you were doing this yourself, you might use the rotate a little bit and then uh, and then Boolean combine the two together and, and do that a couple of times. This particular shape here is probably more uh, complex than most things anyone would, uh, would do, but I have it here. Um, I haven't clicked the uh, close button on a sketch, but I believe we have this set up correctly. So around the outside, you know, we've got our, our wavy bits and then uh, all of our kind of spikes through the middle um, they're all construction lines, so they shouldn't affect anything. So I'm going to click the close button and we'll see if it uh, rebuilds correctly. And let's see, it, uh, it appears that our uh, pilot sketch lines got uh, kind of messed up in there. I suspect our, our datum planes are kind of funky but we can, uh, we can go ahead and fix that. Should be not too much trouble. So I'm gonna come over here and edit the datum plane one, and we'll just attach this to, uh, to this plane here, or, or maybe the other one I want it in the same spot that it was before. And then we will rotate it 20 degrees. Oops. Oh, let's see, that is, uh, that is why it was kind of acting funky. I was wondering why when I clicked on this face, it ended up on the other one, but so 20 there. Okay. And then come down here, edit this one, get rid of that and we'll come down here. Oops. We need a reference. We'll use the same reference. For this one, we need negative 20. 
Okay. And we should be able to rebuild this and we should see it uh, kind of pop over there. And it looks like it, it is, but uh, it appears that maybe these are, these planes here are better suited for being on the edge sections here. Um, so we're stretching it in all directions. So let's go ahead and uh, and do that. So we'll come down here and I'll do a nothing for that one. And we'll move it to a different plane, this plane here. And the way that we designed this, it should maintain the sketch, uh, no problem. So we'll rebuild that and you'll see that one ends up on the correct side. So this one here, this second datum plane, we'll delete this one and we'll grab this as our reference. And we might have to rotate it 180 around the Y so that it ends up on the other side, um, but we'll see. So, yep, there we go. So the rotating 180 degrees on the Y flips the normal um, because you're always drawing on the same side of the sketch. And for these ones we drew, if, if I guess if we had mated them without the 180, then both sketches would have ended up on the same side. Whereas we, we flipped one of them around so that it ended up on the other side. Um, I hope you, you followed that and I hope that makes sense. Um, so now for the rest of it, I'm going to actually probably make an, an edit to this curve here. So it's referencing six, seven, and four. So that would be our four here would be our original line up through the center. So I'm actually going to get rid of the reference to four. So we'll do that by clicking here and unselecting four. And then when we rebuild this part, let's see, not much changed. Um, are we referencing this one, this being sketch five? We're not referencing sketch five. So I'll come down here and I'll add sketch five in. Okay. And it appears that we've got some kind of funky references down here. Oh, I see, I see why this is happening. Our two sketches actually come in and intersect like that. So that's giving us some funky geometry. Um, but that should be easy enough to fix. I'll just uh, hop into those two sketches here and move this point. So I'll take the, uh, the easy way out and I'll just uh, delete that point and move this bit over here. And then uh, I'm going to grab this thing here and add that section back in. We'll make these two tangent. And then this one here, horizontal, making that perpendicular to, uh, to the, the ground. And looks like we lost our, uh, our horizontal there also. But now that we've fixed that, obviously you can see that it's uh, it's working here. We're stretching back out. And I'll do the same thing for sketch seven. It appears to have the same issue. Alrighty, make those two tangent once again, and then this and that horizontal, and once again this point and our 
reference horizontal. And you can see it's kind of ballooning out on, on both sides here. So that's, uh, that's good. That's what we were looking for. And we come back over here to our, our curve. Um, let's see. Our original line sketch is sketch four, and that does not show up in our curve. So I think it's probably that we just need one more stretching side to stretch it over like that, and uh, we should be good here. So I will put a, another sketch on this plane, and I'll come down here, and I will grab this line here. I'm just now noticing that this is going to make our shape not quite a circle, um, because if you notice on the bottom here, we uh, grab the outside point on this section and the inside point on that section. So it's actually going to be kind of oval shaped with this direction here being the thin direction. But I think that's probably okay for this example. So I'm going to grab two lines here one like this and the other like that. We'll make both of them tangent and then this one down here and that one over there horizontal and same with the top. Then this one and then our vertical reference of course we need to grab. And I'll just grab it from this one because that's easy. So we'll make those two points horizontal. It does not like something about that. Um, let's see if we can try that once again. Okay. Like that. And grab this point here. So that these two can be horizontal. And then I believe we just need a dimension from the center. So I will grab between this and this horizontal distance of 1.5 inches. And we should see, oops, we've got one thing left. That would be the height. Oops, looks like I grabbed the horizontal there to the wrong part. So I shall grab this point which if you recall was the original like vertical sketch line through the center. We'll make those two horizontal. Okay, and we should be good there. And I will come down to this curve and I'll add another curve being curve eight. And there we go. That's a much better kind of teacup shape. I will hide my sketch planes and hide the origin here and I'll also save and then I'll hide the kind of variety of sketches I have made and I'll drag this back over to the body um, to make it the base feature and that just wraps that whole thing in park design once again and now I think that's the end of this uh, this particular section. I'm really quick though, just interested to see if this make thick solid tool will work on such a complex shape. And it looks like it does. Um, obviously this is a, a very fancy teacup as you can see on the inside. Um, but let's make it a, uh, say a two inch thick or two millimeter thick wall and uh, we'll call that good. You know, obviously our, our teacup has no handle, but uh, that should be okay. And, you know, it is worth saying that this shape in particular um, would be almost impossible to manufacture with anything other than 3D printing. Um, so this is not a terribly feasible teacup design. 
So most of the, the issues I see with this design come from this very complicated center section and uh, this kind of outer section. And it's that they have no draft, right? So if you were trying to mold this, and obviously this would be a, a molded part or a stamped part, um, you'd have difficulties getting this out of the mold and you'd also have difficulties kind of making these corners down here. But that's just my two cents. I'm not a, not a professional in that area. So there we go. I, I hope you learned something here. Um, this is a very fancy teacup. I might throw this on my on my 3D printer and, and put it out for display. It looks quite nice. But uh, yeah, I hope you learned something and I uh, hope that you have a, a nice day.